It's day six of General Convention, and this is another episode of Integri TV. I'm Vivian Varela, and I'm your host for today's Integri TV. The members and friends of Transepiscopal have been rejoicing in the passage of resolutions D002 and D019. These resolutions adding gender identity and gender expression to the non-discrimination canons on lay and ordained ministry are major advances in the openness of the church. The Vistas Gallery was packed at the end of the legislative session on Tuesday as the deputies took their historic vote and voted two to one to authorize same gender blessings. And here's Deputy Susan Russell, past president of Integrity, to tell us how she feels about that. We just had a historic vote here in the House of Deputies where it was about 78% affirming the liturgies and the theological resources for the blessing of same-sex unions. This has been such a long time coming. Uh, the last three years has been a time of collection and development of these rights and resources. And the fact that we had the overwhelming uh, assent of both our bishops and our deputies now sends us back out into the world with good news for not just gay and lesbian people hoping to have their relationships relationships blessed, but to anyone looking for a welcoming and affirming church to be able to say that the Episcopal Church truly welcomes all. It's a great day. It's a great day to be an Episcopalian, and it's in such a large way um, a tribute to the work of integrity over these last 35 years of never giving up, of staying in the trenches, of building relationships, and working toward a church where all really means all. It's truly a day to celebrate this resolution left room for those with theological differences to stand in solidarity with those of us committed to full inclusion. I think it's a great day for the church, it's a great model for the world, and I think Jesus is really happy today. So it's an honor to be here as a deputy and a great cause for celebration. Oh, how wonderful. I am so very pleased that we voted to move on in this process of studying and learning together what it means to bless as a church lifelong relationships. And so I'm very, very pleased and excited and prayerful that even the people that don't agree with us will use these excellent materials to study the process of covenanting and blessing. I had no problems with the church I came into, but to know that that same welcome that I got is now going to be universal across the entire church is just impressive. We look forward to the ever-increasing visibility of our transgender siblings in the life and worship of the church. Integri TV spoke with Father Moto Magomba, a priest of the Diocese of Ruaja in the Anglican Church of Tanzania. He is the founder and director of FISH, Future for the Iringa Street Children a project seeking to transform their society through ministry to vulnerable children. We asked him for his take on the relation of scripture to our issues. Can you talk to me a little bit about the South Africa consultation? Uh, the South African consultation was a contextual reading of the Bible, uh, where we read the Bible together from our colleagues uh, in the States and uh, all our colleagues from Africa and then there was a time of sharing our stories. We shared our stories and our friends from the West shared their stories. We had uh, stories of uh, lesbians and gays. Uh, they shared their stories and how they came to their self uh, realization, self understanding of their status. And we had very, uh, very touching stories, very genuine testimonies of people who are in committed and faithful relationships. And uh, we had stories of Bonnie, stories of Winnie, uh, stories of people from South Africa. And uh, it was very touching and very transforming. And uh, that uh, uh, changed my perspectives. And the perspectives of my colleagues that we need to rethink of our theological and pastoral approach to gays and, and lesbians. We had a great time of fellowship 
great time of praying together, seeking God's guidance, seeking God's will. And uh, really it was a very good time where God spoke to us, each one of us. We thank Father Mangomba for his testimony at this general convention. Welcome to another episode of Integratech. Today we're going to be talking about ways of searching for information. One of the easiest ways to find out anything about a general convention as far as integrity is concerned is to go to our Facebook page. It sort of looks like this. If you haven't done that, please do so. You can pull it up on your browser or uh, whether it's on a PC or on a cell phone or an iPad. Um, the URL is this, facebook.com slash integrityusa. You may not find it if you search for integrity on Facebook. It's one of the most difficult searches around. And just to give you an idea, there's lots of ways to search. I went around today to see different ways you could search at General Convention to find out some information. Here are a few examples. I'm lost. This exhibit hall is so large. I wish I had a map. Sometimes the things that you use to access information is a little more traditional, such as a map or even a drawing pointing where to go. There are lots of ways of pulling up information on your own. You don't have to use computers, but sometimes looking at all these materials is a little much. One of the ways that technology is making search easier is to use something known as QR codes. I'm over at the News Media Center here at General Convention. If you take a look over here, this is known as a QR code. If you don't want to type in the URL or search for the uh, news clip, you can uh, use a, an app like Red Laser and use this image to pull up the website yourself. All right. Uh, somewhere on the Tinkerty booth is the information I'm looking for, and there it is, it's a QR code. Uh, now I can just click on that, uh, take a picture of that, and be able to go straight to the website. Wait, what's that over there? This, on the other hand, is an example of something a little lower tech. Hopefully you found your way to see this video very easily, and that you'll be able to pull up more videos, more news, more clips, and more tidbits about general convention and integrity. Come back tomorrow and we'll be talking about some more information that you might find useful uh, to make your way through General Convention 2012. Thanks much and my name is Mel Soriano. Welcome to Integra TV's segment on how a resolution becomes law in the Episcopal Church. I'm Marsha Ledford. Resolutions come to the General Convention from dioceses, provinces, interim bodies, such as committees, commissions, agencies, and boards, bishops, and deputies. Once a resolution is filed, the Committee on Dispatch of Business assigns the resolution to a committee of the Convention. Once the resolution is in committee, the committee holds an open hearing including testimony, then discusses the resolution in a committee meeting. After the committee acts on the resolution, it moves on to the House of Initial Action, either bishops or deputies, and each committee is assigned to a particular House of Initial Action. Once the House of Initial Action has acted on the resolution, it must be passed in the same form in the second House to become an act of convention. This is called a concurrence. Resolutions can be passed in their original form, rejected, amended, substituted in their entirety for new language, referred back to a committee of convention, referred to an interim body for further study, or discharged on the grounds that the subject has already been handled by another resolution at this convention. And that's how a resolution becomes law in the Episcopal Church. It's very much like the U.S. Congress with bicameral action resulting in an enactment of legislation. The Reverend Altagracia Perez from the Diocese of Los Angeles received the Polly Murray Award from the Union of Black Episcopalians. We asked her about her work 
that led to this award. We're here with Reverend Altagracia Perez, who is from my home diocese of Los Angeles in the city of Inglewood. And I want to congratulate you on your Polly Murray Award that you received. Thank you. Now, tell us what that meant for you. It was really meaningful for me to receive the Polly Murray Humanitarian Service Award from the Union of Black Episcopalians because of who the person of Polly Murray was and because of the work that was being honored. Um, for me, Polly Murray is a hero in part, um, in part because she's brilliant, and, but also because she brought together the way that most work gets done in the world. She was intelligent, she was a lawyer, she was an activist, she was a theologian, um, and so in her work, in all of its various phases, she worked for issues of economic justice, issues of women's justice, and issues of race in the way that they come together in most people. So as a person who experiences many intersections, who knows the experience of discrimination as a woman of color, as a woman, as a lesbian, um, as a person who was raised poor in the United States, um, all of those things are things that I work for in my work with um, laborers, with workers, seeking worker justice on issues of HIV and AIDS in the lesbian gay community, working with youth on issues of ageism and violence, um, working on multicultural issues and inclusion issues in the, in the church, um, she is an inspiration to me because she brings all of those things together and inspires my work as I now seek a PhD and seek to do academically what I've been doing in the streets and in the parish for the last 25 years. Hola, estamos aquí con Integridad y hablando con la Reverenda Altagracia Pérez de la Diócesis de Los Ángeles en la ciudad de Inglewood, trabaja. Y estamos aquí para felicitarte por tu, uh, tu uh, un honor especial, un premio especial de Polly Murray. ¿Nos puede hablar un poco sobre eso? Este, Polly Murray fue la primera mujer afroamericana a ser sacerdote en la iglesia episcopal y era abogada, era poeta, era académica, era una profesora y era una activista que trabajaba por los derechos económicos, los hechos de mujeres, este, los problemas que sufren las personas de color y para mí es una inspiración ser dada ese premio porque en mi trabajo también yo trabajo con obreros, con personas de color, con mujeres, con personas lesbiana y gay y ella es la representante de, esos, de esas luchas en un tiempo pasado y es sobre su, su trabajo que yo puedo construir, el trabajo que yo hago en la congregación. Felicidades. Gracias. If you want more insight and coverage, check out our blog, find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. There's so much going on and Integrity is committed to covering it. You can find links for all our resources at IntegrityUSA.org. That's it for this edition of Integrity TV. We'll bring you more coverage of the 77th General Convention tomorrow. So be here to check it out. Thanks for watching.